Welcome to this week's Money Metals Podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these treacherous times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the company voted 2015's Precious Metals Dealer of the Year in the U.S., Money Metals Exchange. Happy New Year and welcome to this week's Market Wrap Podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up, we'll hear from Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors and author of the book, The Gold Watcher, Demystifying Gold Investing. Frank tells us where he thinks gold is headed in the near term, gives us a 2017 outlook for the metals, and tells us why he believes the next 100 days will be very key in the financial markets. Don't miss another great interview with Frank Holmes coming up after this week's market update. Precious metals markets started off the new year with a bang. After showing some life last week, the metals complex raced higher in the first trading days of 2017, led by the mining stocks. The Huey Gold Miners Index registered a 12% gain this week through Thursday's close. As for gold itself, spot prices currently come in $20 higher for the second straight week at $1,174 an ounce to post a 1.7% advance on the week as of this Friday recording. Silver is up 2.7% this week to trade at $16.47 per ounce. But the big winners so far in the early goings of 2017 are platinum and palladium. Platinum checks in this week with a 7% advance to bring prices to $969 an ounce. Meanwhile, palladium now trades at $755 after gaining a whopping $72 or 10.5% so far this week and this year. Traders who are looking for a new year plunge in markets have certainly been disappointed. It hasn't paid this week to be bearish on metals, bonds, or stocks. About the only good place to be short is the U.S. dollar. The dollar index dropped 1% this week. The greenback was hurt by Wednesday's release of the Federal Reserve's latest meeting chatter. Fed officials telegraphed a, quote, gradual pace of rate increases. However, some policymakers expressed concern about potential risks in the economy that could cause the central bank to change course. Fed officials are also concerned about the new political environment they will face. Senator Rand Paul wasted no time in reintroducing his Federal Reserve Transparency Act as Congress went into session on Tuesday. The act, which is also known as the Audit the Fed Bill, has the support of President-elect Donald Trump. Auditing the Fed would be an important step in reforming the monetary system, but it's up to Congress and the incoming administration to get Washington's fiscal house in order. Toward that end, Senator Paul took to the Senate floor to berate his fellow Republicans over their plans to add a mountain of new debt. The national debt went from $5 trillion to $10 trillion under George W. Bush, and then it doubled again under President Obama. It went from 10 to nearly 20. And what are we looking at here? More debt. The more things change, the more they seem to stay the same. Republicans won the White House. Republicans control the Senate. Republicans control the House. And what will the first order of business be for the new Republican majority? To pass a budget that never balances. To pass a budget that will add $9.7 trillion of new debt over 10 years. On Thursday, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission announced that former New Jersey Governor and MF Global CEO John Corzine will pay $5 million to end litigation over his role in his bankrupt firm's malfeasance. MF Global went bust in 2011 after taking on leveraged positions in Greek and other European bonds that subsequently tanked in value. MF Global had illegally tapped into nearly a billion dollars in customer funds to ramp up its speculative bets on European debt. Among the MF Global clients who unwittingly financed Corzine's bad bets were those who held allocated physical gold accounts, or at least that's what they thought they held. In reality, MF Global had pooled all the gold assets held by customers together and treated the gold as an asset of the firm. When the firm declared bankruptcy, clients who thought they owned specific quantities of gold stored in a vault on their behalf found out that they didn't. They couldn't access or sell their gold because it was all in MF Global's name. The MF Global debacle serves as a lesson for investors who want to own physical precious metals as a way of diversifying out of the financial system. 
Don't hold precious metals within an account at a brokerage firm or bank. Hold at least some significant quantity of metals in a home safe where you can gain access to them immediately at any time. You never know when you might need them in an emergency. That said, there are risks in keeping valuable, tangible assets at home. Burglary is chief among them. If you have a large holding, it makes sense to keep some of it in a secure vault that has far stronger and more sophisticated anti-theft systems in place than you could ever have inside your home. When it comes to physical security, a professional vaulting service such as Money Metals Depository cannot be matched. Our facilities offer armed guards, class three vaults, multiple perimeters, state-of-the-art electronic security, dual controls, and fully segregated storage. No MF Global style schemes with pooled accounts. Perhaps most importantly, you get insurance coverage for your entire holding. Holders of safe deposit box at banks are often surprised to learn that contents of their box are not insured. Worse, banks have a history of working with regulators and may well be complicit in any government scheme to declare a bank holiday, a bail-in, or the confiscation of assets. Owning physical gold and silver with Money Metals Depository gives you the convenience of not having to take delivery of your bullion or send it anywhere when you want to sell it. You can also open up a Precious Metals IRA account that consists of eligible coins, rounds, or bars stored in a secure vault on your behalf. To learn more about Precious Metals IRAs and other options for our surprisingly affordable secure bullion storage, call one of our specialists at 1-800-800-1865. Well now, without further delay, let's get right to this week's exclusive interview. We are fortunate today to be joined by Frank Holmes, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at U.S. Global Investors. Just recently, Mr. Holmes received another award from the Mining Journal and was named America's Best Fund Manager for 2016, one of many awards he's received now in the mining industry for his fantastic track record. He is also the co-author of the book, The Gold Watcher, Demystifying Gold Investing, and is a regular guest on CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, as well as right here on the Money Metals podcast. Frank, Happy New Year to you, and it's great to have you back with us, and thanks for joining us again. Yeah, it's good to be with you all, and uh, yes, Happy New Year, and wishing everyone buckets of laughter and gold this year. <laughs> Well, to, uh, to start out here, we'll, uh, we'll talk about gold specifically, and, and I want to get your comments on sort of the technical analysis standpoint uh, in the gold market as we begin the new year. I know you're pretty optimistic about where prices may be headed, saying that gold was significantly oversold at the end of the year. Uh, you wrote a great piece uh, recently for your website on the subject. So if you would, please share with our listeners why you're looking for a reversal and a move higher in the metals. One of the things we like to do is try to remove the emotions of markets and apply some basic statistical analysis. And one of the most simple ones is the oscillator, and it's looking at the rate of change over a specific time period. So in 60 trading days, is which we would be published on, and that's looking over basically 90 calendar days, which is a quarter. And you go back over 10 years, 20 years, it doesn't matter if gold was in a macro rising trend or a falling trend, Things will overshoot both on the upside and the downside. And there are these extreme pivot points that investors should look at. And what we've seen here is that gold is down two standard deviations. And that's just forecast over the next 60 trading days. The odds are they have 90% of a probability of a reversal back to the mean. Uh, and it's also, it comes at year end. And usually gold rallies in January going into the Chinese New Year. So it appears that we start at this rally. We're certainly uh, looking good here as we're speaking on uh, Wednesday of this week. Uh, first week of the year does appear to be positive for metals, uh, which, of course, is a, is a nice sign for, for many folks who've been uh, kind of worn out over the, the last few months with the price action. Uh, now, one mm -hmm. of the fundamental drivers you watch carefully when it comes to the precious metals is real interest rates. We've talked about that a lot with you. All other factors aside, Higher real interest rates tend to weigh on gold prices because gold doesn't generate a yield. We've seen yields move higher since November, and that is one of the factors weighing on the metals. We have the Fed targeting three to four rate hikes in 2017, but we know that what they say and what they do are often two very different things. Last year at this time, Janet Yellen was telegraphing four hikes and delivered one, and that was in the final month of the year. So what is your outlook for interest rates in 2017? Well, I think that they backed up very quickly, and I think that we're going to inflation. And historically, whenever you have such a big fiscal stimulus, 
and it's very demand focused domestically, domestic demand. Uh, and we've seen this show up in the small cap stock arena. Then the odds favor that inflation will be higher. And here's the magic is how high can rates stay ahead of inflation without stifling a recession? And I don't think they can go much higher. And I think that's the inflection point. Right now, if you take a look at the spike in short two-year government bonds, which most currencies trade off of, you, you see an extra 80 basis points of unexpected rally in that, in that yield. And that would have basically, on a debt rollover, uh, take the debt servicing up to 3.5% of GDP. So I, I think that that would be fragile, uh, to say the least. And I think the other thing for investors is to recognize is that if, if Trump does go with his tariffs and doing all this stuff, all these, all, some of these thoughts that are out there, this will trigger inflation. And we're going to see uh, gold participate in a big rally. The last thing I want to share with the investors this time last year, everyone was so bearish and bleak, and gold started this rally. And the gold stocks had cleansed all themselves their balance sheets and started on a spectacular run. And when they were up 40%, most of Wall Street was telling me, oh, it's up too high. I would do interviews. And it's up 80%. Oh, that's way too high. Now it's, our funds are up 100%. That's just impossible. And still, you know, we're up, uh, world was up 70%, I think, for the past year. And that was still too high. So we still have this pervasive negativity towards gold and talking down gold as an asset class. And I think that that's another factor that lends itself that we can get this surge of short covering in, the, in gold stocks. Leading me right into my next question, last year was a real roller coaster for the mining industry. Uh, you obviously follow that sector very closely. So will 2017 look more like the first half of 2016 for the miners, where they ascended rapidly and the environment was very positive? Or will it look like the second half of the year uh, when they pulled back and gave back much of those gains? Basically, how are things setting up for the mining sector this year? It's a good question. When you do time series analysis, that is, what is the correlation over 20 trading days between gold and the gold stocks? We're talking about a 95% correlation. So you, if you want to understand the gold stocks, you really have to understand the price of gold and where the direction is going. So a forecast in gold stocks most times is a forecast on gold. Now, what the difference is is currencies. And right now, the cheapest gold stocks in the world on an operating cash flow enterprise value are populating in South Africa and Australia. If you take a look at the multiples compared to North America, uh, and if you look at just having a basket of those names last year and rebalancing on them being a scavenger, even though the gold rally was taking place, buying the cheapest operating cash flow to enterprise value, you far outperformed everything, uh, the top 10 names. In running a mutual fund, we have to have at least 21 names and ends up being more. Coming back to the thought process is that I think any rally in gold, we're going to see those countries where their currency is weak, so therefore labor costs are weaker, but they're getting U.S. dollars, even if the dollar is stronger, and gold prices in U.S. dollars, they have a margin expansion. Speaking of the currencies, obviously one of the major headwinds for gold over the last several months has been a strong U.S. dollar. What are you looking for there on the currencies? Is the dollar likely to weaken versus the other fiat currencies around the world? And, and how does that weigh in on the Fed's policy as well? I think the next 100 days is going to be very important. One thing about Trump, he is taking speed as being a very important factor in how he's looking at capital markets. And so I think that we will have a better feel in the first 100 days. The Deutsche Bank market rigging case has been in the news recently. What are your thoughts there, Frank? I mean, will we finally get somewhere with this manipulation thing this time? Because what we're reading related to this case is pretty damning, and, and the rigging was pretty blatant. Yeah, it, it really is. But I think that to remember is that uh, there's some relationship with the Fed and, uh, and these banks. So uh, they're taking it on the chin. Uh, Deutsche Bank has been beaten up everywhere accused for everything, and when they went to go back for a tax rebate, uh, the IRS came back and went back to the year 2000 to say they didn't reclaim properly some private companies that they invested in. So it appears that no matter what they do, Washington, D.C. is going after Deutsche Bank. Uh, so it could be from gold, it could be for mortgages, it could be for anything that they've done from LIBOR, etc. But I, I do think what it's showing you is that they recognize that the gold futures market is leveraged sometimes 25 to 1, and it doesn't take much money to knock the price of gold around, especially if it's a Chinese holiday. 
and trigger stop losses and push gold all around and within the futures market until all of a sudden the cash market opens. So I, I think that that exposes that between all the banks of how they can play games with the uh, futures market around the physical market. So how serious do you think manipulation is specifically in the metals markets, Frank? And do you believe this will lead to a meaningful impact on the price as, as more comes to light and some of these perpetrators get punished? Well, I think it's always going to happen. You know, it's a matter is, is how do you get it exposed is, is key. And, and I think that there's more and more sophisticated technical tools that people are using and looking for fund flows to, to better engage it. But in the beginning of uh, in 2016, October, in the first week when China was closed and is now the biggest gold bullion buyer in the world and has now become the gold price maker, not the taker, it was a fragile light market and the futures market hit all these stop losses. So I, I think there'll always be guys like that out there playing that game, and and you just have to recognize that uh, if there's a holiday uh, coming up, a major holiday in China, then you can expect that's time when gold can be played with. I, I think that's just a reality. I think that the governments all try to manipulate interest rates so they can borrow cheaply and deploy capital for their own government uh, programs and uh, all the employees they hire. So I, I think that you're always going to deal with this, and, and part of investing is almost dust off the book, The Art of War, in Sun Tzu, where he says strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory, and tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So make sure that you've got a strategy and tactics uh, and that you understand gold markets and when they're more liquid and not. Yeah, very good advice and a great book as well. Uh, getting back to the miners a little bit, I just want to talk about some of the supply-demand uh, situation here. We've got lower prices again. Is the mining industry going to uh, maybe consolidate a little bit? Or are we going to see less supply coming online as results, uh, less exploration? Uh, what do you think there, and, and what kind of impact do you see that having on price and maybe putting in a price floor if, if we uh, have supply really dwindling? Well, I think I wrote about that and, and gave some charts in, in my recent Frank talk. And, I, and it looks like they're calling 2019 as a peak for, for the gold because there's been a massive cutback in the past five years of exploration. And each year just makes it more difficult uh, to have a discovery and bring something on stream. I mean, the process for from discovery to getting an ounce of gold on the ground, uh, which used to take eight years, is now pushing 20 years. So I think this is a new reality, and it's good to have environmental clean air and clean water. But it has become very extremely difficult to explore, to develop, and to maintain gold production. Well, as we look ahead into 2017 here, just being several days in at this point, what stories do you see developing that metals investors are likely to be talking about? Because in 2016, the focus was on the big price rally in the first half of the year, Brexit and the presidential election. In the months ahead, we'll find out something about uh, what Trump can actually deliver when he takes office. Meanwhile, it looks like trouble is still brewing for the establishment in Europe. The banking sector there uh, doesn't look too healthy, and they certainly have not resolved the debt crisis in places like Greece. And of course, we've got the Deutsche Bank market rigging case that as it plays out could potentially make waves in the metals markets. But what are you guessing will be uh, the big stories of 2017, Frank? Pac-Man. So the thought process of gold supply is going to be dwindling and peaking shortly. Uh, you're going to see mid caps buying small caps and big caps have to merge or go after the mid caps. So I think that uh, stocks become undervalued. You're going to see more and more merger activity and aggressive acquisitions this year. Well, as we begin to close here, Frank, anything else that you're looking for this year? And what kind of year do you think it will be for investors, especially those of us who focus on the metals and miners? I've always recommended 10% in bullion and gold. And, and they outperformed gold stocks, far outperformed last year, the, the S&P 500. And gold bullion uh, also did fairly well in a rising interest rate scenario. So I think the thought process of always having 10% and reweighting and rebalancing is just prudent for investors. And stay optimistic. Uh, MIT did a study on the significance of optimism. And if you're pessimistic, you can't see opportunity uh, as readily as other people that are optimistic. So I, I think for our health, both physically and financially, stay optimistic. 
Well, very good advice for sure. And it's always uh, wonderful insights as usual, Frank. Yeah, we, we really enjoy hearing your thoughts and we really appreciate your time once again. Now, before we let you go, please tell our listeners a little bit more about your firm and your services if they're not yet familiar, and then also how they can follow you and your fantastic Frank Talk blog. Well, thank you. It's very kind words. USFunds.com, USFUNDS.com. Subscribe to the Investor Alert or Frank Talk, uh, and you'll get weekly commentaries on different commodities and uh, the world of oil or Russia, Eastern Europe, China, etc. Comment on that. And we also have top world class short term muni funds, and muni yields still appear to be more attractive than buying uh, uh, short term governments. So we have a thought process that it's important to be balanced and have some munis, and that's another way to play the infrastructure. So go to usfunds.com. Well, great stuff, as always, and really appreciate it, Frank. Thanks so much. Have a great new year, and uh, look forward to catching up with you again before long. In 100 days. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will do it for this week. Thanks again to Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors. The site is usfunds.com, and be sure to check out the previously mentioned Frank Talk blog, some of the best market commentary you will find anywhere on gold, the miners, the commodities as a whole, and many other topics related to the investment world. Again, you can find all that at usfunds.com. And check back here next Friday for our next weekly market wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.